Hi, let's talk about a few common pharmacologic terms that you'll encounter in chapter two or the beginning of the uh, learning of pharmacology in nursing and healthcare. Pharmacokinetics. This is how um, we study what the body does to a drug. So we're going to go a little bit further in a few more slides. We're gonna talk about what a drug does to the body. But how does the body take in the drug? So there's four components to pharmacokinetics that are very important for you to understand about each drug. Sometimes, depending on the drug, it's going to be more important to understand absorption. Or a different type of drug, it's going to be very important to understand excretion. And when we start talking about individual drugs, those points will be made um, important to you. But to have the underlying uh, understanding, you need to understand the ADME as part of pharmacokinetics. So let's explore a little bit more. The A, absorption, is the first thing that we do. If you take a, a acetaminophen or an ibuprofen because you have a headache, you, the, you swallow a caplet or a tablet and it goes into your GI tract, it goes into your stomach and it has to be absorbed. And we will discuss in other um, videos about bioavailability and first pass effect, but those two things are very important key components when it comes to absorption. How much of the drug is actually going to be available after it's been dissolved um, and after it's gone through metabolism. Uh, there are various routes of administration uh, to get the drugs to be absorbed. Enteral means just what I said. It goes right into your stomach. Uh, that could be by swallowing it through the mouth, or we may have an enteral feeding tube that's been placed that goes directly into the stomach or right into the small intestine. Sublingual or buccal. So sublingual is under the tongue. Buccal is actually in the cheek. Like if you took a lollipop and you were sucking on it and you moved it over to the, you know, over into your cheek area. And we have certain medications that are delivered in that method. Um, that should probably be a separate bullet point there instead of being with sublingual because they are not exactly the same thing. And sublingual is where we put it under the tongue. Um, subcutaneous is uh, injections, intradermal injections, intramuscular injections. These are referred to as parenteral, topical medications, uh, transdermal medications, and inhaled. So absorption um, is, is the first thing when we encounter the drug. How is it absorbed? Then the D is distribution. And if you look at these pictures, these are all means of distributing goods or people or packages uh, throughout the world. And so you think about it that way. How is the um, drug going to be distributed throughout the body? What is the transport of the drug by the bloodstream to its site of action? Not every drug is distributed in the same way, by the same, uh, in the same amount. If you look at that cargo ship, you see all those uh, containers. That cargo ship can take a lot of um, goods and other things that from one location to another. You can imagine the volume of um, things that they can transport versus the uh, truck above it can only hold it, about one of those containers. So distribution is just like that. It's a, um, sometimes a lot of the drug can go and sometimes a little bit of the drug can go. So we have the A and the D, and now we have the M for metabolism. So the drug's being been distributed and now it's going to be metabolized. This is also called biotransformation. This is where the magic happens. And it's the biochemical alteration of the drug into an inactive metabolite or a more soluble compound or a more potent active metabolite, which is when we see the conversion of an inactive prodrug to its active form. You'll learn more about that later. Or it can biotransform into a less active metabolite. So that is the M. We have the absorption, the A, distribution, D, the M is metabolism, 
And now we're going to look at the E, which is excretion. How is that drug actually eliminated from the body? And you know that they're eliminated because you know we take them more than once. Um, so for instance, if you want acetaminophen for your headache, it, it'll tell you on the, the bottle or the box to take the, uh, one or two tablets every four to six hours. So that tells you that in studies they discovered it took uh, between four, and a, a minimum of four hours and about a maximum of six hours for the drug to be eliminated from the test subjects uh, when they were studying the drug. And for ibuprofen, it's usually about six to eight hours. So every drug's gonna be different. But uh, we do need to understand how the drugs are eliminated from the body. Most of them um, go, are, are going to go through the renal system, through the kidneys, but not all. And we will talk about that later when we talk about individual drugs. So then let me just touch real quick. That was pharmacokinetics, the movement of drugs through the body. Now, but dynamics is another uh, term um, that you'll hear. And this is the study of what the drug does to the body. So remember the kinetics is what the body does to the drug. How does it metabolize it? How does it eliminate it? Um, and now we, this dynamics is what the drug actually does. So I said you take some acetaminophen to help your headache. Well, how does that actually happen? So this is where we look at mechanism of action. How does that drug work in living tissue? What are the therapeutic effects that we are desiring? We usually call it desired therapeutic effects. What is the drug receptor relationship? What's the involvement of enzymes? And that drug receptor relationship, let me just touch on that for our last slide here. This is part of pharmacodynamics. Don't be overwhelmed by all the activity on the slide. Let's take it one section at a time. On the left, with only the natural chemical, they're the green, you'll see the green chemicals there. And this is normal response. So below that, you have receptor sites, little um, openings where that natural chemical can fit in. And when it fits in there, it causes something to happen. And that's what, usually what we want to have happen in the body um, on a normal response. Let's move to the center. We now have um, somebody has taken a medication or been given a medication that is an agonist. So what the agonist does is it mimics the natural chemical when it, it's designed to fit into that same receptor site. But maybe the person doesn't have enough of the natural chemical to get the response that we really need their body to have. So we give them an agonist that can come in there and mimic the green natural chemical. And so that when it hits that receptor site, we get the response we want that we should be getting uh, with the natural chemicals. So we can replace a loss of natural chemical by that or even enhance a response, perhaps uh, like with thyroid. If someone doesn't have enough thyroid hormone, but they have some, we can give them some more thyroid hormone to get their thyroid um, hormone levels up to a normal level so that they can get the response in the body that they need. Then let's move to the far right. Now we're going to look at antagonist drugs. So with the agonist, we wanted to keep, get that response, either get it back to normal or even enhance it, make it even better. But now on the far right, we have an antagonist drug. We wanna block the natural chemical from working. And so we give these drugs, they'll fit into those receptor sites, but do you see the way it fits, it doesn't actually activate the receptor site it blocks it from the natural chemical. So now the natural chemicals cannot fit in there and get the response. So what we have here is a blocked response. So we have agonist drugs that are going to help enhance or re revitalize a response. And we have antagonist drugs that are going to block. So when we um, are talking about drugs, you will hear about 
anticholinergic. When it says anticholinergics, those are cholinergic antagonists. And um, then we have, for instance, morphine sulfate is an agonist. And it, that means we want to help get a pain relieving response. But it's, you don't have to understand that about the, each drug right now. But when we start talking about individual drugs, you will need to remember what it means to be an agonist and an antagonist and what the desired um, therapeutic response is related to how we're using that drug. So there's a few, um, a little introduction to a few of our terms that we'll be using throughout this course in pharmacokinetics, what the body does to the drug, and pharmacodynamics, what the drug does to the body.